I'm very pleased to uh, introduce our uh, guest speaker tonight at the uh, OFI 2020 uh, lecture series. It's uh, Antti Arpe. Uh, he holds an MSc in industrial management from the former Helsinki University of Technology, as well as a PhD in general linguistics from the University of Helsinki. He's currently an associate professor of quantitative linguistics at the University of Alberta, where he serves as the founding director of the Alberta Language Technology Lab. A particular research focus of his is language technology and documentation for the revitalization of indigenous languages. And he is the founding and current president of the special interest group for endangered languages of the Association for Computational Linguistics. So I'm very excited. Uh, to hear what he's going to be talking about tonight. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn the floor over to Ante Arpe. Yeah, so, so th thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm really, really pleased to be here. Um, um, uh, in my, my and Arox time zone, so we're like still in mid-morning. Um, so uh, <laughs> we're really cognizant of the eight or nine hour time difference to, uh, to, 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 to Europe that sort of makes sometimes things a bit impractical. Um, but so yeah, I'd be uh, talking about uh, finding words that aren't there, um, um, which is a sort of a more more mundane uh, title for using word embeddings to improve dictionary search for lowly social languages of the sort that we're work working on. And uh, um, in the spirit of much what I do, that this is not solo work, but actually uh, work involving um, a large, large research group. Um, um, so uh, having two programmers, Andrew Knight and Jolene Bullin, who have worked as software developers in, the, in our application development. Uh, and then sort of then uh, a documentary or competition documentary linguist um, uh, uh, at various degrees in, in their career. Um, so uh, Daniel Heber, who was a postdoc with us, Atticus Harrigan, who's finishing his PhD with us, and, and Daniel Takana, who's starting his master study with us. So a broad group group here, and um, uh, we are actually using using one of the uh, audience's uh, corpus resources that I'll get to late, later later on. Um, so in this talk, so I'll give a bit of a background of the of um, the sort of research partnership, the 21st century tools that I'm, I'm heading and, and the Alberta Language Technology Lab that, that hosts this, this uh, collaboration here in, in uh, mainly in North America. Um, and I'm framing, framing what we're doing from the perspective of general desiderata of dictionary search, um, then shifting to, to shifting the focus to endangered indigenous languages, um, um, saying a few words, contrasting uh, dictionaries for um, endangered versus non-endangered language. I noticed there's a typo there. Um, and then continue to actually the method that we are using. So vector space search, uh, and finally uh, presenting some uh, qualitative and quantitative results of, of how, how this works. Uh, uh, I'm finishing off with some potential uh, next steps. So um, this work is being done in the, in the context of, of um, of a, uh, of a research project uh, uh, spanning for at least seven years, uh, started actually three and a half, half years ago, um, funded by the, from funded by SHRC uh, in Canada and elsewhere, maybe better known as the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. Um, um, uh, the project bearing, bearing the uh, bearing the name 21st Century Tools for Indigenous Languages, for which I'm the, I'm the um, project director. And this is um, uh, hosted by our Alberta Language Technology Lab at the University of Alberta. You see the links to the partnership and, the, and, the, and our lab there. And our goals are, are aiming at supporting the revitalization and uh, extended sustained daily use of multiple indigenous languages in Canada, um, ideally in all spheres of life. Um, and how do we do this by developing modern language technology in partnership with these communities? So, so our work is very much uh, collaboration uh, with communities um, 
uh, getting feedback on what we're developing, not just developing something and dumping it on the com community's door. Um, and, uh, and this partnership concerns approximately 10 institutions and 27 uh, individuals. Um, uh, and this map gives a bit of an idea so that we're um, pretty much, um, our global reach is, is circumpolar that we have uh, mainly uh, partners and participants from Northern uh, North America. Uh, so the coding here, U means university, uh, like, like U means universities, the these here refer to, to documentary linguists or, or language community partners indicating the language families, families we, we work with. So you can see that sort of mostly mostly here in, um, in uh, uh, Northern North America, so uh, Canada and, and parts of the, the, the US working on, on the Algonquian DNA languages uh, uh, on, on, on Haida, uh, on Mohawk. Uh, but we also sort of have collaboration with, with some European uh, partners who, whose work we actually has inspired what we are doing who had since since the beginning of this millennium worked on developing uh, language technology for the Sami Sami languages at the um, Arctic University of, of, uh, of Norway in, 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 in Tromsø. Um, and in terms of, of uh, languages and communities that we, we uh, involve, so perhaps in, in order of what of, of languages and language families that we work with. So, so uh, while we're not our, ourselves in North America focusing that much on Uralic, so our partners at the, in Norway have been working on the Sami languages and actually Penuyuk languages spoken in, um, in, 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 um, in Northern, Northern Russia um, and also actually um, uh, Inuit languages um, um, uh, sp spoken in, 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 in Greenland. Um, uh, ourselves, uh, well, um, concerning North American languages, so well, so we've um, uh, focused ourselves on Algonquian, in particular, Plains Cree, Woods Cree, Blackfoot, and Arapaho in various degrees of, of completion, um, um, uh, and involving some indigenous language communities, which are marked here in, in blue. So, so we have uh, actually uh, two spirit communities that we wanted to get started with. One of which is um, is a Plains Cree um, language organization, the Muscogee Education School Commission, um, actually 100 kilometers south of, of Edmonton on the way to Calgary. Uh, we've uh, initiated a, a memorial partnership with the Lac La uh, Indian Band who, who um, uh, speak Woods Cree, um, where the role of the First Nation University uh, in Saskatchewan is, is, is central besides us. Um, uh, we have some collaborators in, in Lethbridge in the south of the province working on Blackfoot and, and um, and some collaborators in Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, working on on Arapaho, uh, and we've also sort of dabbled a bit with uh, with um, uh, with Odawa, uh, a dialect of Ojibwe, and Northern East P, uh, where the primary work has been done at the, the Carleton University in Ottawa, in the context of the Algonquian Dictionary infrastructure. Uh, besides Algonquian, so we've also started some work on Dene languages, uh, mainly with with Sutina, a Dene language spoken outside. Um, on outside sort of Calgary, um, partnering there with the Tutina Gunaha Institute and Tutina Language Commissioner, uh, where some academic part has been taken care of some colleagues in, in, in Carlton. We've also also done some initial work with Upper Tanana, um, spoken on the both sides of the border between Alaska and, and, and Yukon, uh, with some academic support from the University of Saskatchewan, and then uh, Dene Sulin has spoken in the north of the North of Alberta and and, and uh, Saskatchewan, involving us and uh, and the University of Saskatchewan as well. And and we thought of maybe potentially uh, doing some work with Litcho Yati, also known as Dog, we've spoken around um, Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories. Uh, there are some other language, indigenous languages that we've also touched upon. So we've done some work with uh, with with Haida spoken on Haida Gwaii Islands off the, off the coast of British Columbia, um, Nakoda, um, Suan language spoken here in. In, in Alberta in small pockets and and then Mohawk and, and some other Iroquois languages spoken um, more towards the Great Lakes area where National Research Council um, has has taken the lead. Uh, I have this long slide of, of the various uh, um, academic and and uh, language community participants that I'll 
I'll skip skip here. Uh, so when talking about software resources and applications, so we, so what types of language technology are we developing uh, uh, for related purposes? We, we've aimed at um, at so-called low-hanging fruit, a concept coined by uh, by um, Professor Tom Rostrup at UIT, who, who started actually all this work on, on on Sami. So, what can one achieve uh, uh, in a reasonable time frame uh, that actually delivers? Um, uh, and he's been much a proponent of using rule-based methods uh, rather than machine learning when you don't have humongous corpora to 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 learn things from, but you might have lexical databases and quite extensive descriptions of of, of paradigms. Uh, and that can uh, work for for uh, a basis for rule-based uh, language modeling, um, uh, and sort of the types of applications we've been developing, where we're focusing on the first one here, um, would be intelligent electronic dictionaries or IDICT, um, followed by easily searchable linguistically analyzed databases of spoken and, and uh, spoken recordings and written texts, um, using computer models to develop spell checkers and eventually grammar checkers and then intelligent computer aided language learning applications uh, also known as iCall. And, and so what does this intelligent mean here? Uh, it's our buzzword for, for making use of language technology to deal with the complex word structure of these languages. So, so compared to the majority language spoken in, in these parts, English, uh, uh, almost all of the endangered languages here, here in North America differ quite distinctly in, the, in that um, much of the information is con conveyed by complex morphology uh, resulting in, in, in complex uh, uh, word forms rather than sort of syntax. Uh, and it's it's this sort of modeling of, 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 of this sort of word structure morphology that, uh, that we use to provide better results uh, for these applications. So primarily what we're talking about here concerns concerns the intelligent electronic dictionaries and, and their searches. Um, so just as an as a, a image of our, of, our, of our group, this is the one time during the pandemic that, that we were able to actually meet a year ago in the summer. So Daniel Dakanai there, myself, and Daniel uh, Heber, Eddie Santos who worked on, 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 on some of um, the software developer originally uh, we've got uh, Atticus Harrigan there, so one of the linguists, and Jolene Pullin, um, uh, one of our two software developers there, uh, and, and some others who are not like that. Well, yeah, Jordan Latchler works on the training side, and, and uh, um, some others who are not that much involved with, with this particular work. Um, so um, that much about the background, so I then... Um, uh, swap to uh, 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 talking about the general ob objective of, of, of why should one care about <laughs> uh, so what, what we're doing. So if you're thinking of like a useful dictionary or useful online dictionary, so you'd expect to find results for all types of words and phrases, including fancier or, or rarer or newer words. And just some, some examples that if you're using a, a monolingual dictionary, you'd hope to get results for well, what does collaborate mean? What does procrastinate mean? Um, um, what's a cell phone? What's a Blackberry? What's a Nokia? You'd, you'd hope to find definitions or, or, uh, or synonyms or, or alternative concepts for these. And if we look at this uh, from the perspective of, of the of an of online dictionary for um, majority languages, such as the Oxford English Dictionary here, um, and you can see, so it has 60, 600,000 words collected over a thousand thousand years. So um, we'll, we'll get back to the scope later on. So if you search for collaborate, you get a result that um, explaining explaining what that would mean. Um, um, you look for procrastinate. Similarly, you get um, an explanation on on, on this this uh, word and uh, actually sort of some potential synonyms. So de de delay. So a useful academic word. Um, you look up cell phone. So you see an explanation here and you get some alternatives, mobile phone, smartphone. Uh, uh, you look for Blackberry. So, well, you get the obvious concrete meaning that it's a, it's a, it's a fruit, but um, uh, you can also actually 
find that uh, it's a proper name for a company that, that is used to produce uh, smartphones. Um, uh, so not perhaps the first meaning you might expect, but still like worthwhile to know. Uh, but then if you search with with uh, with Nokia, um, uh, you don't get any 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 results there. So Nokia, at least in the in the uh, Anglosphere, hasn't hasn't sort of uh, codified itself as a as a potential term for for a, for a smartphone. Um, one might also be interested in, in finding results for compound phrases that have have a specific meanings, such as work together. And this example actually here is pertains to questions that people have been asking on a, on a, on a Facebook forum on 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 pre 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 words the 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 Nehia women pre word of the of the day uh, website. So people were actually asking, how do I would I say work work together in 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 Cre? Um, and many of the examples here are, in a sense, people are asking how to say something in 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 in, in one of these. And then I was we work with. So if you look look would look in OED for for work together, um, uh, as a regular search, you don't get any 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 results. But if you go to advanced search and say, well, look for work and and um, together in some proximity, you get some results here. But you notice that um, that this doesn't really. Uh, assign any sort of ranking is simply looking at the core occurrence of, of, of items uh, and then presenting the matches in an alphabetical order. So the item that one we're looking for cooperate um, co-work are here the sixth and seventh. So so um, um, there's no like intelligence in organizing the results. Um, I tried another case work with another as as well in this sort of proximity and 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 then sort of one gets results again in in a alphabetical order with collaborate uh, this time being being the second here. Um, so these concern basically monolingual uh, dictionaries when, when you actually know the language and, and you get the results in the same language. But what about um, uh, similar questions for, for um, bilingual dictionaries? And actually the case for practically all of the, of the uh, lexical dictionary resources for native languages is that they are typically from the indigenous language to a majority language. So similarly, one would like to find uh, results for, for uh, all types of, of, uh, of words and, and, uh, and, uh, and phrases. So um, if we look at this on the uh, majority language context from, from English to French, that uh, could we, we know how to say collaborate, podcast, and cell phone, or work together in, uh, in, um, uh, in French. And, and here in, in this um, um, Oxford provided diction, so we could see that col collaborate becomes collaborate um, uh, in this particular sense. Uh, procrastinate, uh, well, the French equivalent would be atter um, in this sense. Uh, uh, for cell phone, we'd actually get um, um, a compound a noun, um, telephone cellular. Um, uh, but then for work together, so, um, so this dictionary actually doesn't doesn't have for this sort of pairing doesn't have a have a, have a match together. There are some other cases uh, compounds uh, which the dictionary includes, but not 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 sort of um, uh, this one. Um, so in a, in a sense, we're, we're trying to uh, uh, create a, a similar functionalities for the uh, indigenous languages we work with for the, for the dictionaries, uh, or even, even, even potentially better, better results. Um, so the languages that, that um, are in focus here in, in North America uh, are the four, four that are mentioned here. Um, so we, we're working on, on a Plain Cree and Algonquian language that has several thousand speakers in Alberta, Saskatchewan, um, and generally the Canadian Western Plains and a sort of small sort of offshoot to, to the US side in Montana. Uh, we've been working with Arapaho, it's an Algonquian language having several hundred speakers in Colorado and Wyoming on the US side. Um, uh, then we have the Dene language, uh, Tsutina, that has several 10 speakers in Southern Alberta. Uh, Sort of uh, west of um, west of Calgary, uh, and then we have uh, Northern Haida, which is considered generally an isolate, having less than than ten speakers in Haida by 
uh, islands off, off the coast of uh, British Columbia. So putting this in, in, in um, yeah, and, and the resources we, we have, uh, the intelligent dictionaries we have available here for these languages uh, um, uh, are available through these links here. Um, so you'll notice that some of these have, have the final do, the domain app, others have dev, so the, ones, the one with app here means that uh, it's, uh, it's being sort of made generally for, promoted for general, general use, which applies for our plain screen dictionary. It's webinar, it's webinar being words in, in Cree, whereas the other three, Nihito, uh, Nogunaha, and Gusau, they're still in, in development stage. They are accessible. We haven't been act aggressively promoting them. And here, Nihito, Nogunaha, and Gusau, they mean, mean words in, in Arapao, uh, Atsutina, and, um, and uh, uh, Northern Haida, respectively, following actual tradition of naming, naming this dictionary with the indigenous word for words, starting with, um, with our Sami inspiration. So, and this is presenting a bit like different different perspective of, of languages in 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 um, North America. So um, here's a here's a map of the of the historical indigenous language families um, in uh, in uh, North America. Uh, oh, it says quite a quite a deal. Um, uh, and in black, I've indicated the proximate uh, the centers of of, of 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 gravity for the for the languages that we're working on. So uh, um, plain Cree here is a, as an Algonquian language. Algonquian language is spoken from the Rocky Mountains all the way to the Atlantic coast. So being here in Alberta, Saskatchewan, so Tina is sort of relatively close by. This tongue here, pretty much sort of um, west of Calgary. Um, and then we've got uh, Arapa and some other Algonquian languages here in the central, um, uh, so northern central U U US. Um, uh, and then we have Haida here on the Haida Gwai Islands of, of, um, of British Columbia. So, and you'll notice that the Algonquian and the uh, Dene languages are, are, are two of the largest language families in, in, the, in North America. You also have this blue area here, which is uh, 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 Suan languages, uh, and this sort of violet purple area, uh, which are Inuit languages. And, Red here is is um, Iroquoian, uh, of which Mohawk is, is is one. So that's in a sense the, the historical context of the languages that we're we're working with. And if we look at the dictionaries um, that we're operating on, so these are bilingual uh, um, from the indigenous language in question to English. Um, so uh, we're for plain screen um, uh, and the we're in the middle known as Nehia uh, We have the uh, Cree words, uh, it's women are dictionary for Maro who's who's actually listening in uh, from the First Nation University that has 23, um, uh, at least 23,000 uh, entries and counting. We have some additional content from Muscovy's Cree dictionary with some 9,000 entries. Um, for Rapa, we have research from Maddie Cull from Colorado. Um, the Rapa dictionary had some, some 25,000 um, entries. For Northern Haida, we have um, uh, the contents of the dictionary of Alaskan Haida from Jordan Lester at, at our own university here with um, just over 5,000 entries, mostly verbs. Um, and for Tsutina, we have, a, have, have a, some uh, glossary materials from Elder Busta, like with the help of Chris Cox, uh, based on actually some stories um, told by Johnny One Spot uh, 100 years ago to Edward Sapir, known as the One Foot Spear Glossary, which has uh, uh, a bit over 12. Uh, 12,000, 12,500 uh, entries. Many of these are inflected, inflected word forms. So I think there's only a half of those which are like um, uh, be base form uh, entries. Um, so the, the thing to note, note with the dictionary sizes here, uh, we actually did sort of as, as part of this work, we did a initial survey of, of some uh, close to 300 uh, published dictionaries, lexical databases. Um, uh, so Danny Heber did this on, on, on concerning endangered languages. And what, we, what he found was that uh, for indigenous and endangered languages, the dictionary, <laughs> dictionary sizes are actually sort of quite relatively small. And we'll see this in, in comparison to what is available for major languages. The mean number of entries per dictionary language was, uh, was sort of um, um, 
um, between five and, and 7,000 median numbers was actually lesser, just over 4,000 entries. Um, there were only 39 of, of, of the sources that, that he surveyed that had more than 10,000 entries. Um, uh, uh, only five that have more than 20,000, only two sources have, have reached 50,000 entries. So these being uh, the um, dictionaries for Mundari and, and, and Marvel. So, uh, so largely these sort of bilingual dictionaries are, are in, the, in the several thousands or, or 10 or maybe, maybe 20,000, but uh, seldom larger. And if we compare this with with more more point web exercises for majority language dictionaries, so so uh, these bilingual dictionaries dwarf in in, in comparison. Um, uh, if we look at uh, some all encompassing dictionaries of any word in any register at any any time, um, uh, so with dictionaries like the Oxford English Dictionary or the Svenska Academy's Ulbuk for Swedish, you reach half a million or or or, or much more. If we actually look at dictionaries. There are comprehensive for essential vocabulary uh, in, in contemporary usage. One sort of often sees in the range of 100 or 200, between 100 and 200,000 for entries for, um, uh, for major languages. So for instance, the selection of Swedish words uh, in the Svenska Akademi's Udista or, or for Finnish, the Kielit Toimisonake, so the Dictionary of the Finnish Language Bureau have um, uh, ex their extent are in this respect. And then we look at learners' dictionaries. Uh, for instance, Cambridge's Learners Dictionary of English. So we, we get into 35, um, 40, maybe even 50,000 uh, words that are like expected if you want to learn the vocabulary of a particular language. So you can compare these with the, with the, with the previous numbers that, uh, that uh, um, the extents of, of um, uh, uh, dictionaries for indigenous languages are substantially smaller. So, what this, this means is that for less resource endangered uh, and indigenous languages, finding results for rare or more specialized terms is, is more challenging. So if you look at these terms, collaborate, procrastinate, and cell phone backbury. And, and Nokia, um, uh, what were the results? So we're actually looking at, uh, at the uh, lexical uh, database that, that uh, doesn't use our, <laughs> our technique. So if you look for collaborate, you won't find a match. If you look for procrastinate, you won't find a match if you look for work together you want for match for blackberry you will find a very 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 match but you won't find the, the smartphone one if you look for nokia you won't find a match you wouldn't be like expecting to find a match for for, for nokia um and actually sort of um generalizing this that sort of if we actually look at the most frequent english lamata um, um based based on a frequency count of the of the uh of one of the uh, larger Academically available corpora for for uh, North American English, so so COCA, the Corpus of Contemporary American English. Um, uh, if we look at the top ranked uh, lemmas, so allowing for the various inflected word forms, uh, uh, most of of the ma many of the of the most frequent English lemmata are not always found occurring in in definitions at all in the individual dictionaries. Um, so we have here some statistics for for Plains Rapa, Northern Haida, and Sutina. I remember these dictionaries are, are somewhat different in size. So we look at the top hundred uh, uh, lemmata. Uh, uh, we can find ninety nine of those in in uh, Arab language dictionary. So there's one word that is missing. If we look for in the Arapo dictionary, we can actually find all. If we look for Northern Haida. Uh, we can find ninety three of those English words in the definitions. In the Northern Hard Dictionary, and and we're pretty similar with Sutina, so 91 of those are found. But if we go down the sort of this this list, taking the top 200, taking in the top 300, and so on, if we if we get to uh, the top 1,000, uh, so we notice that sort of there's a uh, well over 100 items that that when are over 100 English words in the top top lemmata that you don't actually don't occur in any any of the definitions. Rapao the, uh, has, the, has the largest match with 139, but then for Northern Haida and Sutina, actually, um, you find hundreds of, of frequent English lemmas that are even, yeah, well over 500 English lemmas that don't, don't occur in these, um, uh, in these lexical databases. Um, and actually, um, 
the words that were referring to earlier, collaborate, procrastinate, and so on, that their their ranking is is well further further down <laughs> uh, on on this list. Okay, um, and sort of what are these words? So if you actually look at uh, look at them. Um, uh, high frequency English words based on this COCA list uh, that are missing from any of the uh, of the um, uh, four dictionaries. Uh, uh, so the th uh, thousand most highly ranked uh, lemmas, uh, uh, which are which don't occur in any of the uh, any of the dictionaries. So there's actually 26 of, of these, and you can see here the 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 rankings all together, rankings of content words, noun verbs, um, adjectives, and, and adverbs. Uh, so here's the example set. And and uh, I suppose it's not really that surprising that these missing words that they're, they concern government, legislative finance, modern technology, and certain abstract concepts that that uh, uh, have not ended up in, in these uh, dictionaries. And then sort of, as I noted, so these more specific missing words like collaborate or procrastinate, that they're actually much further down in, down in terms of ranking. I don't think that they actually, some of them don't, don't even meet match, match meet like the top 5,000 <laughs> lemmas in, um, in, 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 in COCA. So they're further down, but, but um, it's still like totally accessible words. Um, and what could be reasons for these smaller dictionary sizes for, for, for indigenous and native languages? That um, many of the documented projects are limited by time and money. They're typically undertaken by by some PhD student or 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 a, or a single academic um, um, working on them, rather than having having a, a team of many people working on 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 the topic. Um, many indigenous languages that they they suffer from lexical attrition. That the remaining speakers may simply not remember as many words as their predecessors did. Um, and then it might be just that the number of lexemes may actually, in fact, be smaller than speakers of major Indo-European languages are used to, that words may actually cover a broader semantic field, or then one has really productive revision based on a smaller number of rules to actually cover all necessary meanings. So the lexical inventory is, is, is maybe smaller because of this, not because of the, the not necessarily because of a, a lack of expressivity. Um, and so sort of what this sort of presents as challenges for vocabulary and dictionary searches is that uh, language-wise, uh, the language might not have, uh, might just, just have a specific term for the concept that the user, user is looking for, that one hasn't just coined a term or that doesn't, it just doesn't, doesn't exist yet. Or, or then uh, alternative language has a term for the search query, but the definition does not exactly match that query, that you're looking for something um, uh, in in English or in French, and and that word just doesn't occur in the in the uh, in the definitions. Um, and then from uh, from the perspective of the dictionaries and from from a lexicographical perspective, it's like entirely possible that definitions don't encas en encompass the entirety of the semantic breadth of the, of the term. So you don't have like all the all the senses that you might use a particular term for. Um, projects often might have a focus on basic level terms um, to the exclusion of others. Uh, one might focus on intentional rather than extensional definitions, even though those might be fully available uh, to speakers of the language. Um, and one might not have included idiomatic meanings uh, explicitly or at least extensively. So these are reasons why you might not find, find matches. So how has one dealt with this previously? Uh, some early solutions are enumerated here. So one might have um, expanded a search target space where it's synonyms and possibly other lexical relations. So if one search with a particular word, one might be searching actually with the synonyms of that word in the, in the, in the definitions to try these results. Um, uh, but the constraint with this is that you're restricted to finding a match um, with the search words and the uh, search word definition with a synonyms, it's categorical in nature. Either there is a match, either the search term or a synonym search term uh, occurs in the in the in the definition definitions. To either the search word or synonym occurs as a word in the definitions. There's no partial <laughs> gradient um, um, match when comparing search and target words. So uh, the solution that we <laughs> have been trying out to, to a, a certain degree of success, but also with some challenges is to use uh, for English to 
uh, sources from English to, to one of these um, endangered English, English languages we work with is to make use of pre-trained embeddings. Um, so uh, um, uh, what we are doing is that we're using the pre-trained three-dimensional word records embeddings for English that have been uh, um, developed um, uh, for, for with the word to vec method by Mikolov and others uh, a decade ago based on the Google News Corpus for which I get conflicting accounts on how whether it's 10 or 100 billion billion words but still humongous in size and and, and um, uh, this set of embeddings has has um, ha this set of um, this resource has um, uh, embeddings for three million most frequently occurring word forms um, this covers actually quite a deal of vocabulary um, and um, we can see that it covers many orders of magnitude more central English vocabulary uh, than than the set of word word tokens uh, in the English definition in any of any of the dictionaries. Um, and how do we implement the search? Is that we create vectors for all the English definitions um, by averaging the individual vectors of all the content words. Um, and why we're we doing the aver average is that this is uh, we, uh, it works on existing. <laughs> embeddings for those words in the definitions, focusing on the, on the content words and taking the averages is, is a fast operation. Um, um, and then we, so we create a single vector for every entry based on its English definitions. Uh, and then we create a vector for the English search term or terms similarly. So if one searches with one word, well, we just pick up the vector based on the embeddings. If there's multiple words, we average them to get a single search vector. Um, and then we, compare the similarity of the of the dictionary entries um, uh, uh, with the search terms uh, based on the cosine difference of these um, associated vectors so the search vector and the and the and the definition vector and looking at the at the cosine uh, cosine difference difference there uh, and what this sort of builds upon I actually had a really hard time trying to find any sort of images about vector space models uh, that were appropriate here. Uh, so I had to make one myself. So uh, uh, the principle in a sense is that based on the contextual occurrences of, of, of words in a, in a, in a really, really large corpus, one establishes these multidimensional vectors that sort of are our proxies for the, for, for the, for the meanings of the words, uh, basically a manifestation of the, the distributional hypothesis um, uh, proposed by, by Zelik Harris and uh, and, and effectively by by J.R. J.R. Firth, <clears throat> so that um, if this sort of position in this multinational space, the, the closer it is, the more 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 semantic and similar one presumes that uh, that two words are. So um, I just put a few example words: dog, cat, and fish. So um, dog and cat pointing more closer to the same direction, indicating that they are really semantic more similar than. Than, than fish, even though fish also share certain similarities with dog and, and cat, but uh, but it's sort of pointing in a, in a, in a further, further different direction. So one could look at the angle difference or then the, the cosine difference to the shared x-axis value here. And one could see that the distance between dog and cat would be smaller than the distance between dog or cat with, with fish, meaning that, um, that um, um, semantic, um, the larger the semantic, larger the cosine difference, the um, the lesser the similarity. So what are the advantages with this? This works even if there are no shared words between the search terms and definitions. We're, we're comparing vectors, not individual words. It does require that one, at least one of the uh, search term and at least one word in definitions is among the Google news vectors. So even if the if there's not a match between the search terms and the, and the definitions in the dictionaries, um, uh, there needs to be one. One needs to share in the three million Google News vectors. One needs to share at least one um, one word from to to get a get a, a similarity assessment. Um, so consequently, almost anything can be compared on on a gradient scale. Uh, so you're not just getting categorical responses of whether whether there's a match or not. You're actually getting an, an assessment based on the cosine difference on the, on the extent of similarity. And what is like really, really nice is that this works with basically any bilingual dictionary where a less resource endangered or indigenous language is paired with a majority language. Um, so not just English, but it could be French or Spanish or or, or Swedish or, or 
Finnish or, or, or Russian, uh, for which vector embeddings already exist. And I believe this has been happening for many of the major languages uh, or which or for which the, the embeddings we train uh, based on available extensive corpora of, well, which exist in the hundreds of millions or billions for major languages. Um, and sort of what is also convenient is that one, one gets semantically similar or related uh, matches presented along, alongside more exact matches. Um, so just some, some examples. Um, um, showing here first just the uh, um, search that are software developer sort of liked very much that if you search for yellow hat, um, uh, for which there is actually a precise word, um, or, 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 then um, uh, you would actually also get matches with um, <coughs> for entries for a purple hat, for hat or cap or headgear, but also for yellow material, yellow cloth, or yellow dress or clothes. So in a sense, associating. Uh, yellow hat, not just with like spe specifically a yellow hat, but but uh, other types of hats and and uh, um, and yellow yellow uh, apparels. Uh, and actually, looking looking at some um, some searches in uh, in our dictionary, so uh, we have the search word here, and then this sort of special flag here to indicate that we're using we are uh, ranking the results based on the cosine um, uh, vector. Um, uh, distance uh, uh, number two means that sort of the results are not ranked based on anything else than this cosine vector difference. So freighter doesn't occur in in, in Arox dictionary, but uh, but ship and large boat does, um, and um, uh, it's a vector for ship and large boat that sort of uh, um, is the closest of the definition vectors for the vector for freighter that does occur in the in the uh, uh, in the Google News uh, vectors. Uh, if you look for collaborate, um, uh, the vector for collaborate uh, does occur in the Google News vectors would collaborate, would correspond with uh, the vector we, 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 we get here for, they do things together, they cooperate. So the vector for, yeah, they work together as a group, the vector for this co section collection of, 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 of definitions is, is closest to, to collaborate. Um, and the same is that uh, that is follow them by they work together, they help one another, and, and, and so on. So one is one is getting matches for a word that doesn't occur in, in the in the in the in the definitions. If we look at the at the, our, our dictionary for Haida, so so for procrastinate um, that doesn't occur in the definitions, one gets uh, this top most match of Google Shulang to dilly that it take their time to be slow. It's actually quite a good corresponding to that. Um, we also look for the compound of work together. Um, so obviously um, that actually work together occurs here, but we get a sort of ranking ranking for the, uh, for the results as, as well. Um, for smartphone, interestingly, we, we, we get BlackBerry because apparently in, in the Google News Corpus, BlackBerry has been used in the <laughs> cell phone context. Uh, um, uh, and Arok has since added actually a word for uh, cell phone and mobile phone, um, so that is also also matched here. Even though Arok is not using smartphone, he's using cell phone rather for uh, for the term. So there's a special Cree word for that. Uh, and if you look for Nokia, so interesting, you uh, based on the usage context of Nokia and in the Google News Corpus, uh, um, the vectors know that Nokia is used for for calling or phoning people. So you get that. That result there. Actually, if we use our general ranking results, we we get the top most result here with SAP, tree SAP, and, and like and one might be wondering what is that? And and um, uh, the thing is Nokia used to produce everything under the sun, so they produced also rubber boots and and uh, Nokia tires <laughs> besides um, uh, uh, cell phones. So so that's the, the corpus associates of that is probably the reason why we get this result there. Okay, so if we go from like this qualitative impressionistic uh, um, um, uh, uh, interpretation results to quantitative one, so we, we we look at those twenty six high frequency items in the in in Coca that they were not found in any of the dictionaries, and and we looked at the uh, top ten cosine vectors different distance rank dictionary entries. Um, 
So for any every of those 26 entries, we looked at the top 10 items that were, were uh, dictionary entries in, in the four dictionaries that were, were, were produced with the cause and vector difference. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we looked at a quality scale using a three-way rank classification. So looking at that, uh, the dividing results into high quality results, moderate quality results, and, and, and poor results. Uh, and I'll be skipping the full results here to, to exemplifying uh, some high quality results. So um, uh, this is where a top search results for missing word is either synonymous with or, or highly semantic related with the search word in question. So for policy, um, um, such a result would be well, we are see where we in, which is law, rule, decision, council, ban of ban council office. Uh, for attorney, when we get the Oyasi, where you know, ban council, court, uh, judge, lawyer. So, quite a sort of close match for administration when we get to Okima win. So, being a chief, chieftaincy, social service, government. And then for PDF, we go with Masinaikan, the word for book, letter, mail, written document. So, so this is actually quite sort of either synonyms or highly semantic relevant. And, and in the case of plain screen, 18 for um, 18 of the 26 uh, uh, items, one, 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 uh, not such results. Uh, same was for Arapaho, well, less so for, um, uh, for Northern Haida. Um, uh, then the second middle class was modern quality results where the top is broad, even the precise semantically related to the query in question. An example of, of, of such is, um, uh, is the English word international, uh, where one got as, a, as the best uh, match of uh, to where for Ukraine and Europe, European. It, it is like semantic related, but decided distinct and non synonymous term. And we had three of those for plain speed, three for Apo, um, um, 11 for Northern Haida. And then, sort of, well, what would poor results look like? That's where the top match is either entirely semantic unrelated or sufficiently irrelevant to be of no practical use. So, for percent, you would get Nisto uh, Sonias, so three quarters, 75 cents. So, for career, you would get is P Tusky win, so a season. You might be able to like, figure out why you get this, but but like it, the poi isn't what you're looking for. And um, it was a bit like fuzzy, so we were looking at the topmost, the high, the topmost match single uh, single match based on the cosa vector uh, um, uh, distance. So there were relatively few of these for planes for and Arapaho. They were a bit more for for Northern Haida. So uh, five out of twenty six <coughs> for planes and Arapaho, uh, ten for Northern Haida. Um, and to just give a bit of a meat on 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 these results. Um, so I'm focusing here on 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 just the the matches for um, for uh, uh, percent. So red here means that the results were were poor. Uh, black would have been that result was um, was uh, moderate, and, and blue would mean the results were good. So for percent, we got largely largely not so good results, whether in in Cree, on Arapaho, or uh, or um, or Haida, perhaps, uh, yeah, for Arapa, percent getting a match with, with half was like maybe that sort of moderately relevant. Uh, but if we swap over to looking at matches for um, for national, uh, we get more high quality results, uh, uh, but still bad results. Uh, and if we look for the word author, actually, we get quite a deal of, of um, of uh, good results in blue, uh, moderate results in black, and only few, few um, well, poor results in in red. So author and book, author and and preface, author and narrator storyteller, um, author and to be a writer secretary, to write letters, well, uh, do some writing. So these are pretty good results. Um, and then you have like results of writing coming up, coming here as moderate results. And then scientist and creator considered to be less good, uh, less good results. So um, presenting uh, uh, the quantum results here. So uh, uh, we have the mean counts for the quality class among the top ten right matches for the twenty six matching. So for for Cree on on average, one had 
three good results, three moderate results, and three poor results uh, in the top uh, 10 ranked uh, matches for the 26 missing words we looked at earlier. Rapao, the values were even better for almost four um, um, high ranked results, uh, three moderate and, and three poor among the top 10 results per per per, the, per uh, searches. And for Northern Haida, uh, the results are more to the moderate or poor. So there was the, the mean was only one half of high results with uh, three moderate and, and six poor per each of the 10 results for the uh, 26 items we're searching at. And if we look at sort of the median rank of the semantically most relevant result among the top 10 candidates. So for plain screen, the median rank was second, for Apo third, uh, uh, for Haida, uh, Haida uh, further down, so basically halfway down for the 10 top most ones. So relatively good for, for plain screen Rappo and not as good for Northern Haida, but not the worst either. So uh, some further exploration on metaphorical meaning. So um, um, uh, what if one, one searches for, uh, we we'll, we'll be looking for a word that sort of goes beyond the, 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 the sort of concrete um, um, uh, literal meaning. So if one would search for soapbox, um, uh, one gets the pulpit or lectern here, but also sort of somebody using um, uh, using a soapbox to scold or being cross or <laughs> scolding in loud voice. So that's a good association there to be, pretend to be holy and, and, and so on. Sanctimony associated with being on a soapbox. Uh, uh, for snowballing, so we we don't necessarily get it here at the first two, but then we have piling things together. Or, um, that seems to be a relevant, relevant, relevant match. Um, but yeah, sometimes the goodness results it, it depends on the context evident in the corpus. So um, here, looking at the, at the results you get for reality in the Rappa dictionary, you you get um, a movie or television show, picture, or photograph. Maybe seeing mirror images, and this is because of uh, the Google News corpus uh, appearing in the, collected ten years ago, having lots of reality TV, uh, reality television. <laughs> Um, um, uh, occurring in the corpus of reality being associated with television and, and not, not some other, other concepts. Maybe, maybe sort of being associated with seeing mirrors is, uh, or being confused is, uh, is a make a spectacle of self. Maybe those are, uh, uh, in essence, interesting connotations. So uh, finally, then with multi, multi word expressions, so if we search for something like simmer down, um, so in the in the Haida dictionary, we get a result here of letting something to boil down without stirring it, which is actually quite a good match. Um, but then we search for CI to I, we get sort of matches with I and and seeing. So not really a, a good match there. If we look for blow up, uh, we get results with blow, um, but not actually. Um, there's an entry that has the definition of like explode, so we're not getting up match with that we look at cabin fever so we get results for fever and cabin but not not their not their combination um uh, and this seems to be that uh, one gets decent results where the where the meaning of a of a, com of a compound or a metaphor is really the sum of its parts but if if the meaning is more than some of its parts that then the um uh, the sort of word-based averaging of the search vectors does not produce uh, the best results and sort of one could also use this not just for like searching for um, um, the best word much but you can also use it for exploring semantic domains. So you could look at uh, well, what are words related to farming? What, what are words that are semantic rules of farming? And we get actually this sort of pretty extensive list of uh, an exact match, but also being a farmer, arable land, uh, um, you look for furniture, you get the uh, words referring to, to that, uh, but relevant to that as well, uh, dusting something, uh, flooring, cabinet work, mattress, and, and so on, uh, and cloth, <laughs> uh, house timber, <laughs> all related to furniture. Uh, one is looking sort of more broadly at at the results. So, uh, to conclude, um, uh, based on our observation, what are the limitations and what might be further 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 uh, development avenues? Um, uh, if there is no semantically related or close definition at all in the dictionary, the, the semantic vector distance ranking cannot fix that. If there really isn't a, a sort of uh, entry that 
really has anything to do with with a with a, with a particular concept that that the technique can't like invent something. Um, this is really up something to the lexicographers. Uh, and if the meaning of multi words is not compositional, uh, if the meaning is is more than the sum of its uh, sum of its uh, parts, uh, such a meaning will not be matched with a semantically similar single word. So the example this blow up, it isn't matched with explode or seeing eye to eye with understand. Um, and for this one might be inclined to try something like a center based language model like uh, like BERT, but of course that comes with like relatively heavy, heavy um, computational cost and, and do, doing that for multi word searches might be impractical. Uh, but in a sense, yeah. And a further point to note is, is that one of the risks is here that that uh, this can uh, this can increase the rate at which words acquire connotations by analogy with English rather than analogy in, in the language in question. So one should like stress that this computational similarity ranking is no replacement for human understanding of appropriateness. That the system provides some suggestions, but it doesn't like guarantee that 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 is the best or appropriate word for a particular particular meaning. So as the conclusion, of, uh, one could say that it appears to us that using this, this vector space uh, distance can turn search result in the major language of definition more relevant and better ranked. Uh, and so one can get sort of, uh, one can get semantically relevant matches in ways that are not uh, achievable with classic information retrieval techniques. Um, and users can perform a successful search of words that do not occur at all in the dictionary. So what you wouldn't want to have is that people are looking up up uh, words in these dictionaries and they get many times that there, there is no match. There is no match at all. So we're able to provide some results that are like often good, but of course not always so. Uh, and have some a valuable point here is that these techniques can they are directly available to any applicable to any bilingual dictionary providing transitions between a high and low language. So so that's I think one of the beauties of, of the of this of this technique. So we only try this with with um, with the, uh, uh, four languages, which represent three language families. But uh, but once the technique had been developed for for one language, it was quite quite sort of straightforward to uh, implement apply it to to the other other three. So I would conclude with this. Um, uh, thank you for attention. Uh, say I hi in Korean, kiitos in Finnish. So I'd be uh, open for any. Any uh, questions, comments, suggestions, criticism, whichever. Uh, thank you. Yes.